their existing behavior. And also, when we do interventions, the target, the, the targeted interventions aim at behavior change of people with risky behavior. We all understand that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, changing behavior is the ultimate goal of whatever we want to do. If we want to do radio programs that uh, encourage people to decide to go to a health center early, then we need to make sure that we encourage them to change the behavior of staying long before they consult the health facilities. And behavior change can take place uh, within an individual or within a community or at a societal level. I'm trying to write notes so that people can, can have some notes, but we can also print them out for people. So this is what we've just talked about. But I want us now to, okay, let's think about behavior change communication. What do we understand about behavior change communication? We are the social workers in this house. <laughs> What do we understand? What is behavior change communication? Mm -hmm. I think when they say behavior change communication, I mean, for example, if I'm like carrying out a particular program and uh, my message is not going through, I may change my, my method and take another method that may help now to change the people to behave the way I want. Okay. This is the right way. We try to point people to a certain direction. Okay, it's a strategy which refers to a systematic attempt to modify or influence behavior, which indirectly or directly promotes health, prevent illness, or protect individuals from harm. Like when we're talking about maternal and uh, child health, we also try to make sure that people know the, the, the problems associated with that. If they stay longer before they go for a center, that could cause problems later. Maybe the woman is HIV positive and does not attend the clinic, then the baby might also be infected if there's nothing that is done. So we create or we communicate a message that shows that it is important to change that behavior. Mm -hmm. All right, we know that a communication is a process of transmitting information. Mm -hmm. And also on a particular topic between people. So we also know that the communication is a process. It's not just a product. You cannot say you are communicating to people if you just give them a brochure or a, a, a poster or mm -hmm. the person. Let's look at that poster. Gold beer, the people's choice. Mm -hmm. Some people might not understand what it means. You understand? And the media alone does not really help much. There also need to be other interventions, like uh, Charles was saying, we need to do multiple interventions so that people can understand and get the message clear. Okay. And then when you talk about communication, we've got different types of communication. We've got intrapersonal communication. What is intrapersonal communication? We've got intrapersonal, interpersonal, I'm just going to listen and then you can tell me what you understand about each. We've got intrapersonal, interpersonal, mass communication and organizational communication. Uh -huh. I think the uh, form of interpersonal communication is face to face. When I meet somebody, can I tell you discuss on a particular issue uh -huh. that is uh, taking a particular area or uh, taking a particular problem. So that is inter interpersonal. interpersonal. Okay. And interpersonal? When you talk to yourself mm -hmm. within you. Okay. And the mass communication one? Mass communication is when you want to reach a larger population. Mm -hmm. And the last one, which is the organizational communication. Particular structure. Can be different. An institutional community radio party. If it's community, if it's regular community radio, it's within the group. If it's a women's centre, it's within that group. But do we understand that this? We can use all forms of communication to pass the same message. Because when you listen at home to the radio station and listen to this one program, it makes you talk to yourself about that particular issue. And also, you can also do that in face to face, maybe discuss with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So that, that is all clear. But uh, for communication, okay, what are the steps to behavior change? Because all these communication methods that we're talking about, they can lead to behavior change. What are the steps to behavior change? 
communication. We start by um, listening, getting the message, uh -huh. getting the message, and the question themselves. If truly they are following the, the, if truly they do respect what they are, what they are following, I think they are not. They have to adapt to the, the new method that arises. Okay. If the message is true, uh -huh. how will they know it's true? The content is. Yeah. So the examples. Uh on questions and answering, on questioning. Okay. The question whoever is talking. The question whoever is talking to actually give them a good part uh -huh. about what he or she is talking about. Okay. Might, might be if the information is coming from somebody who is a specialist in that domain. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. If they believe the person. Uh, what you are telling the mm. Then we're talking now, let's say now this is a radio program. Mm -hmm. So we also understand that if you provide wrong information, people will, will internalize that. Feedback, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Maybe they will you personally in some cases to argue up, to reject. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But some people might not understand that this is false information. Mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. So radio can either build or... Mm -hmm. Destroy. Right, right. right. yeah. So it is important that we understand that. So like you were saying that there are steps to... Um, to be able to change communication, we have knowledge. People hear the message and they, 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 they understand. You know, that they, this is the first step. One first learns about a new behavior. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, we're talking about testing for HIV, for instance. You know, that. So other people don't care about knowing their status. Mm -hmm. But once you communicate that, 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 that it is important, they learn the importance of testing for HIV. And then they approve, they need to approve that, okay, this really uh, is something that is worth trying. Mm -hmm. And then once they believe that information uh, will be beneficial to them, then they, uh, they intend to adopt it. They intend to go on regular HIV checkups. Mm -hmm. you understand? So those are the, the, these are the steps uh, of, of um, behavior change communication. And then they practice it. Mm -hmm. They attempt the new behavior and continue to practice it. For instance, they go to test and they discover that they are negative. Then they keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And they keep checking if they are still not infected. Or if they are positive, then there will be other ways of trying to make sure that they are not infected. Mm -hmm. And then they advocate. Once then they, uh, okay, one can then promote the new behavior through their social professional networks as a satisfied practitioner, you understand? So because maybe they didn't, they were not informed at first, they didn't have the, the knowledge and the importance of testing for HIV. There could be a lot of reasons. It could be maybe they don't know what goes on there and they might be scared that maybe there will be, that a lot of blood will be drawn out of, 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 of their body. Maybe that's why they're not going there. But once the message has been clear, has been clarified and it's easy for them to understand, then they will approve. It will be easy for them to also encourage other people to go because they know they've been there and there was nothing um, that killed them. So it will be important. So we're going to pass on now and talk about the seven C's of communication because we also this uh, community program also has the radio element in it. It is important that we know exactly why we need to do this. In order to achieve, all these are connected to this. When we talk about the seven C's of communication, the first one, we talk about command attention. We don't just go into, into, into the program and just broadcast for the sake of broadcasting. We need people to get the message, to learn. That's why we're talking about the community learning program, you understand? The community is supposed to learn something from each and every program that you're doing. So you command attention, that's the best one. If you have a health program, your health message should stand out from all other information the listener has said. For instance, Charles mentioned that uh, no one wants to listen to a, to a program that they know something about it. If they know the information that you're giving, then there's no point in listening. But you could use that, that information that they know, and then you build on it. You bring something new, something that they don't know, so that the message stands out. Um, when we talk about command attention, we also mean that uh, if a program 
Only messages that are noticed can be, can be remembered and be effective. If you, you talk about HIV testing, everyone has heard about HIV. Everybody knows that uh, you need to test for HIV, but they are not encouraged, you understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe you will come up now with a program that talks about dangers of not knowing your status, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. And then people will realize, I might be in danger, I need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the second one is cater to the heart and head. Um, we say an emotional response will increase the time and energy a listener spends on thinking about the message. If you tell people stories, for instance, um, people um, relate to the story that they hear. And maybe it could be something that uh, something th that has happened to the listener somewhere. You need to target one person. That one person might have shared the same experience with the person that is in this room. So that emotion will make them think and realize, okay, I need to do something about it. So most people are moved at least as much as emotion as uh, uh, they are moved much by emotion instead of reason. You understand? Mm -hmm. So somebody will tell a story that is being emotional, or how they conducted HIV, or maybe the partner knew that they were HIV positive, but they hid it for so long until they died, and maybe the partner only realized that they, 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 they are positive while they've been living with no protection. You understand? A story like that will catch somebody's attention to go and test, even if the partner does not go and test. And then the second one, the third one, um, we're talking about the clarification of the message. It is important to have a key message for each and every program that you are doing. It must be clearly understood to be effective. Otherwise, if you have a program that talks here and there, people will not understand. In some radio stations, when you talk about HIV, for instance, they will say, yes, we do have HIV programs, but they are not focused. You would hear them talking about testing and talking about treatment and talking about nutrition <coughs> in one program. And the clear message doesn't come out of exactly what the people should take out from that, from that program. And it ends up uh, confusing the, the listener instead of making sure that people gain something. So we need to have focused programs, uh, a message that should convey a single, a program that should convey a single message. <laughs> Mm -hmm. One message, yes. So that people know exactly. If you're talking about testing, you should also make sure that it's clear that you're talking about testing. Uh, and then we're talking about communicating a benefit. People will ask, what's in it for me? Why should I listen to the program? What is it going to do for me? They need to know that um, people will risk trying a new behavior if they believe it has a real advantage. People who smoke might um young. Huh? Young. <laughs> no, I'm not saying but, but smoking is bad for your health. They mm -hmm. know that, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. But they keep on um, smoking, you understand? They don't see a benefit for them to stop smoking. Until maybe you show something that uh, so that they, 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 they feel a benefit, you understand? Like for instance, they, 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 they're spending more on buying cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you encourage them to stop so that at least they can have a, like, some more income in their pockets, then maybe that is what will motivate them to stop. You understand? Because they know it's best for their health. While you are encouraging that behavior so that people can have more money in their pockets, they're also helping their health. You understand? That's one example. And then. then you need to create trust. It will keep coming back to what Charles also came um, and you came up with on those, on those uh, characteristics. Because if you use people, you said you must tell people stories, people that can be trusted. Identify role models in your community. People that have experienced what other community members are experiencing. And let those people come and share the message share the experience and how they have moved on and changed their situation. So that way you are creating trust. So models in the community who has gone through what the listener uh, is going through and that can help a lot.
a message that you do. Just a uh, 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 quick on the trust. Uh -huh. the, one of the TV programs in Malawi, it was a talk show. They brought this uh, famous actor. Uh, so he came there as a, a role model, talking about uh, uh, protecting oneself, using condoms, and uh, those things. But people know him as a very reckless guy, mm -hmm. and uh, the program was trust. How can you? We thought you, you, you use people. How can we trust all those people that you have used before? Mm -hmm. Your program is fake. How can you use that guy as a role model? Mm -hmm. the, his stories are all in the community, and you try to convince us that that, that guy is good. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. So, it, the whole program lost almost all its entire audience just because they featured somebody they could not trust, somebody they knew very well, and you were presenting him in a. In a person. Yeah, if they had brought the same person mm. in his capacity as a reckless guy, <laughs> the, 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 yes, the, the, the audience would have trusted him all his life. I know him. Even with the, okay, we had a similar uh, uh, problem in South Africa, but it was not a role model. Like somebody that was was coming for an interview or something, but it was a presenter mm -hmm. at a radio station. So the regular presenter was not available to do the program. So somebody else stood in for her. And I, apparently on that day I was listening with one learner group, mm -hmm. and they were not happy at all because they're asking how can that person come to tell us all these good things while we know the mm -hmm. ways around mm -hmm. in the community. You understand? So that, te that, te that says a lot to the community out there. How you behave, your behavior will determine if people will trust you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're talking about calling for action. You call for action. You don't just do the program for the sake of doing the program or, or telling the story. People need uh, encouragement to discuss new ideas, to make difficult decisions or to try a new behavior. Uh, after seeing or receiving a message, people should know exactly what they should do. You need to direct people to something. If you are talking about HIV testing, people need to know at the end of the program what they are supposed to do, where are they supposed to go to be tested, you understand? And you need to make sure that the environment is, 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 is conducive. If you say to people, use condoms so that you don't uh, contract HIV and AIDS. If you say use condoms, where are the people supposed to get condoms? Mm -hmm. Are there free condoms available? Where are they available? Is it easy for people to access those condoms? You understand? Mm -hmm. We had a problem in South Africa when we were evaluating a program. We are talking to young people to use protection to have sex. You go to the clinic, there are free condoms available. But the problem is where they place those condoms is where everybody else can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So they are scared of going there and picking up condoms because there could be somebody who was looking at them and talking to their parents, mm -hmm. you understand? So the issues are, uh, of their issues, if you direct people to somewhere, make sure that it will be easy for people to do that action that you are calling them to do. And then the last one in the seven things of, of um, communication is consistent. Consistent repetition of the message through role modeling, personal stories, expert advice, jingles, poems, songs, and any other thing that you can think of will help the listener understand the new ideas. Like for instance, you might have a jingle, or you can create a PSA, which is a public service announcement that encourages people to test for HIV. And the people that you call, if you're talking about a program, you're doing a program on HIV testing, you would call someone who's gone for an, for an HIV test, so that the person can share the experience, how they went, and how it was done, and how they feel now that they've done that. You understand? How it has helped them. And then you also call an expert from the health um, department, someone who's going to emphasize the importance of testing and how you can do it and where you can go. And um, okay. So. We say repetition is essential. The same message repeated with variations, but with basic consistency becomes familiar and acceptable. If people keep hearing that same message, go for HIV testing, they will end up 
internalizing it and doing something about it. Any questions?